Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gumbansing. This Easter holiday, the Virgin Islands will observe Holy Thursday and Good Friday, as well as Easter on Sunday. Virgin Islanders will also continue the faithful tradition of Easter camping on beaches on St. Croix. Today, campers were already seen setting up camp campsites, getting prepared to spend time with family and friends. Stephanie Brown files this report. Along the shores of the west end of St. Croix, campers have begun setting up their tents and preparing their campgrounds to be as comfortable and enjoyable as possible. Easter camping is a long-time tradition that has been practiced on St. Croix for many years, and families, groups, and friends look forward to communing together during this Easter holiday. Even though Easter holiday begins this Thursday, some families have already began camping. We've been here since March, what is it? Um, March 29th, we came out. Angela's family has been camping for over 40 years, and she has enjoyed her Easter campaign experiences since she was a little girl. Her daughter and grandchildren were with her today, partaking in the tradition. Actually, it's uh, the way how I see it is bringing your family together. You know, once you get here at campsite, you bring your family together. We have food, drinks, and lots of fun. Miss DeLoren of the Sunny Acres Seven-Day Adventist Church usually has church duties to attend to, but she came to her friend's campsite. But today, we take the day to come with our sisters to have, you know, a little good time. And we close today, but we are so happy to be with our families and our sisters from the church, you know. At the campgrounds, the campers enjoyed one another's company and engaged in conversation while cooking. We have our little stove here. In the kitchen, if you look back, we have our kitchen set up back there, and we have everything there ready to go. Tomorrow is the last day of work and school for many Virgin Islanders, and campsites will be filled with families hoping to enjoy this year's Easter holiday. For News 2, I'm Stephanie Shalana. As campers enjoy this Easter weekend, campers should also note, pay close attention to children swimming at the beach near campsites, as well as keep campsites clean and secured. Well, Governor Mapp extended his best wishes to Virgin Islanders celebrating the Passover and Easter holidays. Passover is observed April 10th to 18th and April 16th, Easter Sunday. He said this is the time Virgin Islanders in the Virgin Islands where families come together for camping, worship, meals, and other activities. He said, I hope you will share in the blessings of this special time of year and reach out to those who may be alone or otherwise less fortunate. In observance of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter holiday, all offices of the Virgin Islands government will be closed on April 13th, April 14th, and Monday, April 17th. Normal office hours will resume on April 16th. Well, here's an update. The St. Thomas St. John election officials, they are meeting this evening to continue to count an estimated amount of over 200 absentee ballots. Additionally, provisional ballots will be counted. As of today, election results still show that Janelle K. Saru is in the lead of the special elections. The Virgin Islands Elections Office also informed that uh, absentee ballots will be received until April 18th. Nine federal law enforcement officers received commissions as Virgin Islands peace officers after attending an orientation on Virgin Islands history and culture at the Police Training Academy on St. Thomas. It was for three agents from the Drug Enforcement Agency, DEA, three from the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, and three from Homeland Security Investigations, SHI and uh, HSI rather. Virgin Islands Attorney General Claude Work Walker said it creates a much closer bond, calling it historic, calling the news a historic day in the territory because he says this is the first time that commissions have been granted since the legislature passed the law. The legislature enacted a law granting such powers to federal law enforcement officers provided that they attend orientation on VI culture and law conducted by the Attorney General's office. These agents now have authorization to enforce local criminal laws, including the power to make arrests for violation of Virgin Islands laws, in addition to their federal police powers. A local businessman who operated a franchise under MoneyGram Payment Systems, Inc., has admitted to embezzling more than $1.4 million from the company. Alvary Smith, 51, of Content, faced four charges, grand larceny, embezzlement by fiduciary, embezzlement by employee, and uttering a forged handwriting. 
in connection with the crime but rather than face a jury he accepted the terms of a plea agreement smith pleaded guilty to the single charge of grand larceny and the remaining counts against him were dismissed the plea bargain also requires smith to pay restitution to MoneyGram in the amount of eight hundred fifty thousand dollars and are placed on probation and complete 100 hours of community service for each probationary year. Smith was taken into custody on November 25, 2015 by officers from the Economic Crime Unit at the time Smith owned A&C Express Corporation. Well, here's an update on the McDonald's shooting and robbery court case. Hellwood Urbina Paris, 20 of Estate Thomas, was arrested on March 29th and charged with first-degree robbery, second-degree robbery, aiding and abetting, five counts of using a firearm during a crime of violence, two counts of first-degree assault, two counts of grand larceny, and third-degree assault. According to court documents, he was in the vehicle with the five others involved. Also, Junior Antonio Feliz was arrested on March 29th and charged with first-degree robbery, second-degree robbery, and aiding and abetting. He was identified as the getaway driver who, was, uh, who waited outside as the events were unfolding inside the restaurant but fled when police arrived and the boys inside had taken the customers hostage. Another man, Betel Augusto Rosario Polino, 18, who told police he orchestrated the whole crime, was also waiting outside with Polino, according to court documents. Uh, Department of our officers responded approximately at 11 p.m. to reports of an armed robbery in progress. Upon arriving to the scene, issued statements informed officers that the suspects were ordered to put down their weapons and exit the business. Officers stated that soon after they heard shots being fired from inside the McDonald's restaurant and officers fired back. Police then apprehended three suspects. Two of the three suspects sustained gunshot wounds and the third suspect succumbed to injuries from a firearm. Meanwhile, McDonald's uh, Lockhart Gardens, they reopened on Monday, April 10th. Uh, they, the location has reopened according to Vincent Lamazou, the St. Thomas operations manager for Arcos Dorados. They explained that the restaurant opened this week after assisting local law enforcement officers in that investigation. He said, we would like to thank the community for supporting our employees and the residents of our neighborhood. This week, Crime Stoppers, they're asking the public for help Glendrate has the details. Remember, you may earn a reward for information. Here's more. On Monday, November 3rd, at around 10 p.m., a 911 emergency call center received a call of discharging of shots. Interstate Williams Delight area. Responding officers made contact with a complainant who said that a male companion had come to her residence for a meal earlier that evening, and as he was walking towards his vehicle about 10 p.m., she heard gunfire and saw two men running into the bushes. West of Estate Williams Delight, officers canvassed the area but were unable to locate her friend. On the morning of Tuesday, November 4th, 2015, at at approximately 6.50 a.m., the lifeless body of Erickson Hansen was discovered in the estate Williams Delight area, Frederickstead, with what appeared to be multiple gunshot wounds. Tragedy in San Bernardino. Police say a man opened fire inside an elementary school, killing his wife and a student. The gunman then killed himself. The shooter, Cedric Anderson, targeted his wife, Karen Elaine Smith, right there pictured in her classroom at North Park Elementary School, where she taught special needs children. Eight-year-old Jonathan Martinez was airlifted to a hospital where he later died. The other child listed in stable condition. The students were bused to a local high school as parents waited eagerly to be reunited with them. A man's refusal to give up his seat on an overbooked United Airlines flight led to a disturbing scene. Now some of the other passengers are speaking out. Here's an update. Three Chicago airport security officers dragged a man from his seat after the airline chose him to give it up, and he refused to budge. One passenger says the man somehow reboarded and was taken off again, this time on a stretcher. He hit his face when they initially dragged him off, as you guys saw, and uh, and it was 10 minutes later, uh, he just comes running back in and uh, runs to the back. His face is, is bloody um, and just clings on to the post in the back and just, just saying, I got to go home, I need to go home, I need to go home. And uh, and it wasn't until like 30, 45 seconds later until uh, 
uh, authorities uh, followed him. Another passenger says the officers did not need to use force. I, I don't know why they did that. I, I, I'm still in bewilderment. Passenger Doyle Davis blames the airline, saying it put the officers in a difficult spot. I don't believe any American citizen should be treated this way. Um, but but I, I think the important piece here is the, the narrative um, should not be uh, that the police were in the wrong. And passenger Tyler Bridges says the man shares the blame. It was pretty shocking that it got to the level that it got to, you know. Um, in part, that's the man's fault, you know. When the police came on, he should have, he shouldn't have resisted. He should have just left. But it, it was kind of an unbelievable scene when they're actually grabbing him, pulling him off the plane. The Chicago Department of Aviation said it put one of the officers on leave pending a review, and the Federal Department of Transportation is also investigating. I'm Andy. And keeping our eye on the economy, some airline news for home. United Airlines, mean, meanwhile, will be boosting air capacity from Houston to St. Thomas this summer, offering daily flights from June 8th to August 15th. It's an increase from the four weekly flights United offered last summer. United will again offer daily service from Washington's Dulles International Airport to St. Thomas this summer and is extending its weekly Saturday service from Newark, New Jersey to St. Thomas through October. American Airlines, however, will be reducing and we'll have some more information on that. Let's take a look at the New York, the stock market watch, keeping an eye on the economy there. We can see the Dow down, NASDAQ down 14, six, S&P down three. Coming up on News 2, want to meet the Easter Bunny? Grab your Easter baskets and get ready. We will share some Easter events for the young ones and events for the adults. That's all coming up next. Welcome back. Early today, Senator Kurt Violet, chairman of the Finance Committee, heard testimony in the Cleone Henrietta Creaky Legislative Conference Room in St. John from Harith Rukeman, the president of Island Green Living, proposing a state-of-the-art facility in St. John. Here's more on that. We are seeking legislative approval for a lease for parcel 6A1, Estate Susannaburg on St. John, a half an acre property consisting of flatland and derelict and dilapidated warehouse. It will provide an expanded resource depot to include a thrift store, an expanded recycling upcycling center to include glass, plastics, and eventually paper and cardboard in addition to aluminum, a community center and library to be used for seminars and town hall style meetings where you senators can come and meet our residents and with sustainability authorities, community leaders and, uh, and a community composting center. Virgin Islands Department of Education's Office of the Insula Superintendent St. Croix District, they're informing the public of the relocation of its payroll operations from the department's main offices on Hospital Street in downtown Christiansted to 8D Estate Cottage in the vicinity of high quality concrete. Payroll began operations at the new location on since Monday, April 10th. The St. Croix District's Human Resources and School Lunch Program also relocated to the 8D Estate Cottage earlier this year. Payroll operations, human resources, and the school lunch program can be reached at 340-773-1095. Well, a quick note to all our viewers, there will be a change in programming this week due to the Good Friday holiday. News 2 will be preempted by a special Caribbean passport on Friday. News 2 will be back on air on Monday at 7 p.m. and 11. Again, News 2 will be preempted by Caribbean passport at 7 p.m. on Good Friday. Good news, the CAHS Music Suite, they travel to Philadelphia for the 2017 Philadelphia World Strides Music and Heritage Festival this past weekend. And in true Chicken Hawk fashion, they took home numerous awards. Winners were Symphonic Band, Jazz Ensemble, Concert Band, and the Hawks Concert Choir. Jerry LaBrooke and L.J. Brathwaite received Maestro Awards and Sandra Cherville received an Ovation Award. Congratulations to them and directors Rosalind David, Naomi Toussaint-Williams, Lubin Daniel, and Francis Carwood.
from music to music, congrats to the students representing the VI well. Well, time for our Carnival Corner, April 9th to 11th. Department of Public Work began outfitting the parking lot early this week for the Carnival Village. April 12th to 17th, booth owners will gain access to the parking lot for booth placement. Public Works is reminding the public that the Fort Christian parking lot is now closed and will be until Carnival is over to make way for the much-loved food booths and rides of the Carnival Village. In the interim, the public is advised to park on the waterfront apron and surrounding areas. April 21st is the official opening of Wang's Musical Haven. It begins at 6 p.m. DJ Eddie will entertain for the opening ceremony. Mules King later on when Hyper Sounds and our final phase as well as Crossfire entertains on opening night. We will share that schedule with you later on in the week as well. Virgin Islands football coach Francisco Jarvis is at it again. He is traveling to St. Croix to hold a football camp and clinic from April 21st to April 23rd. His recent football showcase in St. Thomas led to three students who were able to attend college and play football in Minnesota. Now on Friday, Emoy Thomas from Ken, Demoy Thomas from Ken, will be signing his letter of intent at the Emerald Beach Hotel to attend Minnesota's Masabi Range Community College. The catch of a 34.06 pound dolphin fish, Mai Mai, earned St. Thomas's Angela Berry top angler and a $1,000 cash prize at the Virgin Islands Game Fishing Club's 22nd annual Dolphin Derby that was held April 9th. Fishing aboard the St. Thomas-based 45 Wilbur Sportfish family ties with Captain Colin Butler at the helm. Barry caught her winning fish off the north coast of the island. Barry's first place fish was about 21 pounds shy of the 55 plus pound criteria to win the tournament's ultimate prize of $25,000 in cash. However, the Whopper also landed her the top female prize. Adam Masrak landed a 33.51 pound dolphin for second largest, while Jennifer Tyler took third with a 32.63 pounder. We'd like to say thank you to Dean Barnes for those really great pictures there. Tutu Park Mall Easter Wonderland celebration. These are some events you can put on your Easter calendar. On Saturday from noon to 4, they say over 1,000 eggs will be hidden and much more, including face painting, DJ music by Pete and a bouncy house. house. Of course, the stores will remain open with Easter shopping deals. They are open also on Good Friday from 11 to 4. Meanwhile, Yacht Haven Grand, they have a spring fling in store with an egg hunt, bouncy house, arts and crafts, and more. You are asked to bring your Easter basket for the egg hunt that begins at 11.30 a.m. and you will have the opportunity to meet the Easter Bunny. That's this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also now, Impact in Your World Christian Ministries, they're inviting all the children to join them at the 32nd annual helicopter egg drop hunt that will take place on Saturday, April 15th at 11 a.m. at the Sheldon Mali High School field. This egg drop hunt will be different, they say, from any other hunt we have seen. There will be damp bouncers, vendors, and a helicopter dropping the eggs, and prizes will be given out to children who collect the most eggs. They're asking you to bring a basket to collect those eggs as well. Well, there are Easter events and others coming up. Emmett has more on your weekend guide. <laughs> Until midnight tonight to register to win two free tickets to see Justin Bieber live in Puerto Rico. That's airfare and hotel accommodation. Come out is a free getaway to Puerto Rico, but only one way you can get it, you gotta enter to win. Innovative and choice, better together. Virgin Daughter Festival celebrates its golden jubilee and it's gonna be mass. Friday night, they have our very own international stars, Rock City, along with Viban and Styli. And grand headlining of it all is reggae star, Jack Cure. Saturday there's the Calypso show, and then there's the lady herself, Miss Bacanal, Lucy Destra Garcia. And Sunday, they get a rise and shine tramp, followed by the parade, and then in the village, closing it off, is going to be Asa Banton. As for the USVI, Hootsa Shan Brass, alongside Asa Banton, is aboard the General 2. That's why it's a big boat ride called Go Hard or Go Home Part 3. It's Easter weekend. Tutu Park Mall invites the entire family for an afternoon of fun. Face painting, bounce houses, music, musical chairs, and so much 
much more is the Easter Wonderland celebration at Tutu Park Mall. Saturday night, who will be crowned Queen of Carnival 2017? Following the Queen show, there's so much parties for you to choose from. First, there's the Grown and Sexy. It's a CD release party. Also, it's Cool Session, live and direct at Illusions Nightclub. If you feel like a switch of pace, there's every artist down at Crush Nightclub. From Styli to Poison to Chateau Rancho. Listen, it's called Soka Mania. Only one way to enjoy it, you got to be in the place. Sunday, it's the Family Fun Day and Traditional Games at the Lionel Roberts Stadium. The after party or the place you want to be on Sunday night is Virgin Havens. For who? Versatile band. Virgin Havens, where you always get great meals, beautiful bartenders, and the best party in town. Listen, this is your Fat Guy 2017. Every Tuesday, we're going to tell you what to look forward to for Carnival 2017. Stay tuned. Lots going on this weekend. Let's see what the weather's going to be like, especially for those who are already out there camping. We'll be right back. and wet days ahead of us. That's because we have a low pressure system right here and that is bringing us those cloudy conditions that we're experiencing today. By Saturday, this front right here is going to make it to the islands and we're going to see even more clouds and even more frequent showers for the weekend. If you're going to go to the beach, Friday is probably going to be your best day. Right now we can see some precipitation over Puerto Rico as well as over the islands. Just a few showers hours moving through the area and that's going to be the story for most of the week. Tonight your high is your low is 74 degrees with some spotty showers and those spotty showers will continue tomorrow. St. John 83 degrees and also in St. Thomas 83 in St. Croix 84 degrees and again we're expecting those showers to move through the region. Uh, until Thursday, really. Uh, the Atlantic side uh, waves one to three feet, wind out of the east from five to 10 knots, and in the Caribbean, waves from two to four feet, wind out of the east from 10 to 15 knots. Now, we don't have any kind of small craft advisory or warning to tell you about, so everything's pretty mild and calm. Your five-day forecast, well, we're going to see those spotty showers on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday is when it kind of dries out. It's going to be our best day to be outside, go to the beach or get whatever kind of outdoor chores you might have to do on Friday. The temperature is going to remain warm at 83 and that is when we'll see that next front move through, which means on Saturday we're going to have a lot more uh, frequent showers and same story for Sunday. We're going to have more frequent showers move through the area, but we will still have plenty of sunshine and the temperatures will remain warm at 83 degrees. Sandy, back to you. Thank you for that. So some cloudy and uh, wet conditions to look forward to, but not too bad. Thank you for that. Cecilia Camacho of Ricardo Richards Elementary School shared this nice picture to take us into the weekend with some fun things to do outdoors. Cecilia, you should hop over to St. Thomas for the traditional games that's taking place this weekend, but you can do some fishing on St. Croix and camping. Send us your news weather picture to the address on the screen. Be sure to include all the info we need and then tune in to see it right here on News 2. That is all for now. I'm Sandra Gumansing. Have a wonderful night. We leave you with music from Shaw HP, the band who performed this past weekend at the Prince and Princess show at the Lana Roberts Stadium. Have a wonderful evening. We'll see you next time. Hey, you know, you